Now, a Nobel Prize winner has been criticised for suggesting women scientists shouldn't work with men. So Tim Hunt said the problem with girls is that you fall in love with them and they cry when you criticise them. He admitted being a chauvinist pig, but does that excuse his comments? Well, with us is columnist and broadcaster Milo Yiannopoulos, as you can see, and also Dr Emily Grossman, who is a maths and science teacher and tutor. Who'd like to start, Doctor? <laughs> I think the issue here is that his comments are irresponsible in an environment where there is such a strong gender imbalance still in the sciences. I work as a teacher and tutor and I am really passionate about encouraging young women, uh, girls at school to study science, to go into sciences and there's still an environment where a lot of young girls still feel that science isn't for them. There's a historical um, reason for that. Back in the Renaissance time women were told that their brains were, were too soft to have a powerful skull, that exercising our brains would shrink our ovaries. We're still coming back from that and we're in an environment where we're desperately trying to dispel these stereotypes, to dispel the image that science and maths is more for boys than it is for girls. And these types of comments, potentially harmless in terms of intent, are actually really um, reinforcing these stereotypes that we're trying to get away from in terms of encouraging girls to go into science as a career. We well, hear this a lot from scientists, you hear this a lot in particular from female scientists, but the fact is that there, are, so there is some reason to suppose that, some, that, uh, that, there, that there is an advantage to being a man in certain subjects. There's reason to suppose that gender essentialism, biological determinism, whatever you want to call it, the fact that there are male brains and female brains may indeed have some basis in science. Now, this is sort of thrown out of the window completely by, by feminists and female academics who just refuse to accept that there, there's any reason whatsoever why, why there might be a gender imbalance. Two things on that. One, actually the science is very much still out on that. And two, if you look at equality in society, if you look, for example, at Bangladesh versus Norway, what you notice is the number of women in science and technology subjects actually goes down as societies get more equal because women simply don't make the same choices that female academics and feminists would like them to. Women actually don't want to go into the sciences um, on the whole, and when they have every option available to them, they tend to choose not to. I don't think that's the issue. I think it's about confidence. I think women suffer... Again, we're not talking about all women, we're talking about some women, we're talking about some men from lack of confidence and from something called imposter syndrome where we attribute our successes to external factors and we lack the confidence to actually believe but, okay, that we are good enough sorry to do to, it. Sorry to interrupt you, but uh, you know, if, if you're going to get put off a career in science because of an offhand comment from a Nobel Prize winner, um, how committed were you really in the first place to being That's a scientist? A I mean, it's an, it's, it's an women extraordinary learn in a very claim, different way. Women learn, again, not, uh, not all women, but majority of women learn in a way that's supportive, that's nurturing, that's encouraging. I see that in the students that I teach. I see the girls that I teach go into um, mixed sex sixth forms and get totally put off because they're in a sink or swim environment, they're in a competitive environment, they're too frightened to put up their hands and arms. So we shouldn't have competitiveness in yeah, science. Yeah, competitiveness in science is bad. We should segregate the sexes, really. That's what you're saying, isn't it? Absolutely much not. Better, much is better, important. in fact. If what Tim Hunt said was exactly true, what you're saying is that, that uh, gender segregation would be a good thing. You're saying mixed classes, the competitiveness is bad for women. So maybe he's right. Maybe we should separate labs out into female scientists and male scientists. I'm that seems to what you're it's saying. It's important for women to be able to compete in a male environment, but it's important to help those women, to support those women in terms of confidence and in terms of self-belief, because women are more naturally self-reflected. Again, not all women. A lot of men are like this too. It's sort of a weird sexist position to take, isn't it? So sort of women can't really take it. So we need to be extra specially careful around. <laughs> Well, it's different for gay men and lesbian compete. women? Well, it's brilliant being a gay man you can get away with murder. You can do anything. I mean, there's the one respect in which identity politics is brilliant. You know, um, as, a, as a gay man or a lesbian, you can basically get away with murder. You can be bitchy, you can be sarcastic, you can be rude and abusive, and you can do whatever the, whatever the hell you like, and nobody complains. Women, I think, really, you know, <laughs> until very recently, until possibly the last half decade, it was certainly true that women had all kinds of structural disadvantages in society. That simply isn't true anymore. Um, it's not true, for example, when women go for, for jobs in, in science, technology and uh, mathematics, you know, a study came out I think two or three weeks ago in the US saying that women have a two to one advantage over men with the same qualifications because everyone's so desperate to hire women. So the reality out. that people experience, you know, um, going, for, going for jobs and in the, work, uh, you know, in the working life is actually that women are sort of structurally uh, advantaged, not disadvantaged. A and study that's happened came out very recently. also to show that out of 65 countries, the UK has the highest discrepancy between confidence amongst boys and girls in terms of how good they feel that they are. Girls are coming out out of school and not going into those careers because they feel they're not good enough, they feel they're not welcome. But, but women are in the, women actually in the, in the majority skills, university. Those very no, skills, no, those Sorry. very qualities that yes, women do cry, some women cry, I have cried when I felt out of my comfort zone, when I have felt afraid, but actually that didn't make me any less good. I cried when I came out of all my 
exams at Cambridge and I did better than the boys. And actually women cry because they're sensitive. Again, not all women, some women, lots of men too, because yeah. they're sensitive, because they're self-reflective, because they're empathic, because they're passionate and they're willing to take on criticism. They're so well, willing right. to look at themselves. Excuse me? So Tim Hunt's right. He's, he's right that women cry, but the implication that that makes us at a disadvantage, that that puts us in uh, as people who shouldn't be going made, into... I don't think he made that implication. What, he was, what he was saying is that he finds... That's not the point. It's irresponsible to make that kind of comment no, right. in an he, environment he, he where we're hoping to encourage girls to go into science. What he said was he finds it personally a distraction. He said that he finds it a distraction in science. Well, then he needs to... Yeah, of course. And he's a silly old man who doesn't understand the latest, you know, um, but he the latest sort of feminist politics on this. What is he, 73 years old? We can't expect him... Right, we we can't expect him to be up on the, you know, all, all of that kind of stuff. He's in a position and I of think responsibility. What, what, we're, what we're witnessing, really, um, is a comment that would be perfectly unobjectionable if it were over the dinner table or if it was, for example, your own granddad. It, but wouldn't, because it would because be unobjectionable if there were young girls present who were studying maths and science at school. And Andrew thought, Short actually, has tweeted to say, is it because, he's made these comments because, leaning to your point, because he's a septuagenarian and he's from a bygone era, sexism in, in the modern world has no place, but he is an old man, and so do we have to forgive him? Of course, I'm not talking about him and his comments as him as a person I'm yeah. talking about what it does in terms of the environment that we're bringing girls up into and a responsibility that people in positions of authority like he is to actually not perpetuate these negative images about women it's it's really just, damaging when girls do a math so test strange. in an environment I mean, where they've been told that they're not going to be as good as girls if they do a math test in, in that environment and they identify themselves as girls they actually write their name as female on the test they won't do as well you're, in that you're, environment yeah, but you're because completely two different things things you know it, it is true that um, teachers in general uh, mark boys down but it's true that in STEM subjects they mark uh, no, no, boys up about, no, no, when you when you sort of do the blind tests down. you know where, where when, when teachers know uh, the gender of the, of the person who's studying um, boys get marked up in the sciences. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the stereotype threat, which is when girls identify themselves as being female by writing their own name on the top of the test, they will do worse. It has been shown that they will do worse because they know that they're being, that they, they feel that they will but probably perform fail. Better in in more girls are going, well, okay, so we have to ask, girls is it, perform better at you have to ask if this is really a problem. More women are going to university, they're getting higher grades at school, they're getting higher grades at university, of all more women graduate, women. women in their 30s earn more than men for the same work in their 30s in the UK and the US now. They are two to one more likely to get a job with the same qualifications. Where's the structural bias against women here? I don't see the problem here. What I do see actually is a very reasonable complaint from a lot of young men, not my generation maybe, you know, I'm sort of 10 years older than them, but from a lot of young men who are going to university, going into the workplace, and they don't recognize the world you're describing because it's not their experience. When they go for a job, they are discriminated against because people are desperate to hire women. When they go to university, of you know, more women students. are doing are doing better all around them, and they feel as though being held up to feminine standards of behavior, being whacked on Ritalin because they're too boisterous in the playground or not getting the same support that women do at university. That okay, and what about mental health issues that men have? Time, would you like to make a final point and then I'll come to you. Of all A-level physics students, only 20% are girls. How can you possibly say that we're in an equal environment where girls are coming out and doing studying as science as much as boys are. We are absolutely not and we need to make sure that girls feel that science is for them and it's not just for boys and they're not being pushed out of it because of who they are and because they might cry and because they might be self-reflective. But this is, this is based on an assumption that there ought to be some kind of gender parity. My suggestion is that there isn't. We don't complain when women dominate subjects like nursing. We shouldn't complain when men dominate subjects like physics. <laughs> We're going to have to leave it there. We could chat for another hour on this. Milo, Doctor, yes. thank you both very much indeed for joining us here on Sky News. We'll continue this discussion on uh, Twitter. Women should not be in a science lab because they cry and fall in love, says a septuagenarian biochemist. What do you think? You can find out what my guests think uh, on Twitter as well. Dr. Emily Grossman, at Nero, send us your thoughts at Kay Bowley if you would like to. We've got all today's top stories coming.